In this video, I'm gonna show you how using domain-driven design can make your app more maintainable and more fun to work with. Welcome to Full Stack Jack. On this channel, my goal is to help you improve your skills as a full stack developer. So if that sounds like something you're into, subscribe. In this video, we're gonna be diving into domain-driven design in Laravel. I'm gonna show you a package I've been working on that makes developing using domain-driven design much easier in Laravel, like you're typically used to in a non-domain-driven design application. Uncle Bob does a great job of describing the epiphany every developer experiences on their way to DDD. I look at it, and at first I think, yeah, that's a Rails app, and then it occurs to me, wait a minute, where's the architecture? Where's the design? What the hell does this app do, and why is it that all I see is Rails? Is Rails really that important? Should Rails be dominating everything? Let's begin by defining domain-driven design. Domain-driven design is a software design approach focusing on modeling software to match a domain according to input from that domain's experts. While the definition is pretty straightforward, I wanted to delve into it just a little bit more. If we want to just take away all of the fancy language, what we're getting down to is this. We want our code to match the real world problem. If I work in a bank and I have deposits and I have withdrawals. I would then in my code have something that's called deposits and something called withdrawals. Within that domain, I would have all of my business logic. So I wouldn't have a folder with controllers and have a withdrawal controller and another controller called deposits controller. Rather, I would have a directory and inside of that directory, the directory would be called, for example, withdrawals. Inside of that directory, I would I would have everything I need for that uh, business logic. So for example, I would have all of my routes, all of my controllers, all of my services, repositories, if you're using those, whatever logic you need to complete a withdrawal in your code, that is where that logic will reside, is within that directory. So that is the, the basic understanding that we need when working with domain-driven design. You can dive in and it can get very complicated, and that's not really necessary to be able to apply these things to your application. If you've ever worked in a Laravel application, you will immediately recognize this application here. There are a few non-standard directories, but for the most part, it's a typical Laravel application. Application. If you've ever worked in a Laravel application of relatively big size, you also know how the models directory can grow so large that it eventually becomes difficult to manage. You'll also notice that we have many models that don't have anything to do with one another uh, grouped together simply because they're models. This is also true of the controllers directory where we have the media controllers right next to the location controllers, which are right next to the invoice controller, and the groupings aren't very logical. If it's a small application, it can make sense to group things this way, but the larger the application grows, the more this sort of breaks down. If you're already working with an application of this size, you can refactor to a domain-oriented sort of design uh, simply by using the tools in PHP Storm. There's already a great video on that, and I will link that in the video description. But if you're just starting out with your application and you have already been convinced that domain-driven design is the way you'd like to go, I have been writing a package that makes this much easier. I will show you what this package can do for you and how it can make uh, development easier for you if you're going to use domain-driven design. Another standard Laravel thing is the routes file. Typically all of the routes are located in one file. Eventually that will become unmaintainable. So that's when you reach in and you start creating individual files for your routes. So routes for your dashboard, routes for events, uh, routes for your files, your library, location routes, whatever your application has. It's best to have them in separate files so that it's more maintainable, you can gloss over things quicker, and you can find them quicker. Those will need to be registered in the route service provider, and one way to do it is to register each file individually. A better way would be to loop over each file within the API directory here. That is a work in progress. With this package that I will be showing you, all of this happens automatically. You won't need to reach into the 
or remember, first of all, to go to the route service provider to register these routes, you'll be able to have the benefit of having the route files separated and also not have the hindrance of needing to register each individual route file. Converting a large application to a domain-driven design is pretty straightforward, but it's not something you have to do all at once. Here is an example of that same large Laravel application that is a work in progress moving towards a domain-driven design. Immediately, I noticed the benefits when I was actually working within the domain. So if I was working on media, I could basically stay in the media directory. My controllers, my models, my repositories, my routes and services are all within the media directory. And the same thing goes with invoices and payments. This is a work in progress. I'm sure there will be ways to improve this. You basically start seeing the benefits immediately. Without further ado, let me introduce to you PHP Squad Domain Maker for Laravel. I explain in the README why I created this package. It is a very rough work in progress. As time goes on, I plan on adding to the package. One of the major benefits is the scaffolding through um, Laravel commands and also the automatic route registering. Let's take a look. This is a brand new Laravel application. And we're going to start by requiring the domain maker package. Once that is there, you can see that as of now, we don't have any domains. So let's fix that. We can go PHP artisan, make a domain. We'll call it media. Let's see what that got us. We have a domains directory. I've also seen it written domain singular, but I decided to go with domains because the typical way to name directories is if everything inside of the directory is of the same type then you just and there's more than one you name it plural so i went with that we have a media directory also a http directory where the controllers middleware and requests will reside a models directory repositories and routes this is by no means everything you're going to need when you're developing your domain but this will get you started. And as time goes on, I plan on adding to the pack. So let's open up that routes file and we will see we have one route with the prefix media and it's just a callback with test. If we check out that route, we'll see it is here. So we have a media route and it is a closure. So it has already been added to the route service provider and is already available to you. That's pretty cool. If you wanna know how it does it, I can show you that. Quickly, if we go under vendor, PHP squad, I check, is there a domains directory? If there's not, we go ahead and return early. And if there is a domains directory, I want to scan that directory and so I can get all of my domains. Now, once I have all of my domains, I can scan those directories for a routes file. And if that route file is there, then I'm going to loop through all of the domain route files, and I'm going to add those routes to the route service provider. And that is how that works. We now have our first domain, which is media, and we have a route file, which just has a callback. So let's say we want a controller. We will start out with a YouTube controller. Why not? PHP artisan domain, uh, and we'll call it, we'll make it an API controller. It will be in the media domain and we'll call it YouTube controller. Once we have put that in there, we can see it. So we have a typical Laravel controller in the correct directory automatically through this command. And then we can go ahead and make a routes file for this controller. We'll have all of the YouTube routes in one file and we'll call it YouTube as well. Now we have a resource, a set of routes under the resource namespace and they are pointing to that YouTube controller and everything is linked up nice. If we check again for the routes, we will see that those two are automatically registered. So that's what this package can do for you. It will do more in the future. I'd like to get some people using it hands-on and then we can add to it together. It is open source. I hope this video and the package helps you get started with domain-driven design in Laravel. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your developer friends. Thank you.